the current state of AI is very cool. There's some cool things happening in the industry. And I do think it's going to change many things in our society, including the way instructions for computers are coded. With that said, we do as humans tend to overestimate the future. I mean, look no further than Back to the Future 2. So it's like we overestimate how rapidly technology will grow. And at the same time, we underestimate the sheer power of our analog brains. You know, it was the brain that came up with the idea of creating voltage signals amounting to ones and zeros to make these complex computer systems in the first place. What makes AI interesting is those ones and zeros turning around and saying, hey, let's make our own ones and zeros. In fact, AI can create code, and a lot of times we don't even know what the, the actual code is. It's kind of like a black box of AI scrambled code. It's really interesting how artificial intelligence systems approach problems or challenges because it's like the ultimate outside of the box thinking style. For example, you had this AI system that beat the champion of the game called Go. And the way it did so was by using very non-traditional moves that were very strange, but were so effective against this Go champion that have since become a part of the teachings of this game. So it goes back to the classic saying of if something is dumb but it works, is it dumb? And I am by no means saying that AI is dumb. I think that AI can approach things to the benefit of humans in terms of the brilliance of being completely open. The best way I can describe how AI works is to give you an analogy. So do you remember that that memory game where you have a set of cards and the goal is to pick two cards that match? So you have all these cards flipped over, you pick two, you hope that the two that you pick are matches. It was in Super Mario 3 if you ever played that game. AI looking at a set of data is kind of like a player of this game in a way because it starts with complete randomness. When you have all the cards laying face down, you have no idea which cards are which. So the first two that you pick are completely random. And when you pick two, if it's not a match, you still have learned the information about those two cards and where they are and what they are. Building from that, you can slowly start to learn which cards are which, and you can start to make those matches until you've ultimately been successful. AI is like that in a way, except think of millions and millions of cards and playing the game over and over again in fractions of every second. AI is really good at, for one thing, image detection, but is getting better and better at writing code. There's still a long way to go. And ultimately, all artificial intelligence right now has a long way to go. The ultimate goal is to get to what's called general AI, which is essentially AI at the level of the human brain. And that's coming, hopefully in our lifetime, because I think it'd be cool, but maybe I'll live to regret those words. As it is right now, you still very much need a human to guide these AI systems. And just like any, any tech innovation, things will change. The way we program will change. And there's a lot of software engineers that are worried about, you know, will we even need people who know how to code in the future? I don't think the future is is that grim. I mean, think about right now, there, there's, these a, there's AI that can build simple websites and that leads to web developers saying uh oh but your grandma can use wix right now and make a a nice looking website so just keep that in mind it's going to be a gradual process if it's even a process like that at all 
I think it's going to be more of a mutual beneficial relationship between programmers and the AI tools that are out there and will be out there. And there are a plethora of AI programming tools out there. One of the big ones in the field right now is OpenAI's Generative Pre-Trained Transformer 3, also known as GPT-3. It can create working code in several different languages, including Python, just by being provided with relatively simple parameters of the kind of program the user is trying to obtain. The thing is, the apps are by no means perfect that it creates, and it still needs to be cleaned up and polished by a real human programmer. By the way, if you've made it this far, chances are you like this video. Want to make it official? There's a bunch of other tools. There's a lot of code completion tools like GitHub Copilot. It basically uses its data to try and figure out whole lines of code after what you're writing. It's kind of like when you type into Google search, it starts to autocomplete what it thinks you might search, but in programming. So when you start to write a line of code, it tries to fill in the rest of the line of code that you're writing and beyond. There's a lot of code completion software tools out there. Tab9 and Kite are other ones. There's lots of potential here. But like I said, there is a long way to go with all of this stuff. And if you can think of AI right now as in its infancy, still essentially a little kid playing with a stick on the front lawn, experimenting, guessing, stabbing in the dark, but learning from every mistake. AI is the best example of how failure can sometimes be the best teacher. Thanks for watching this video today. If you want to learn more about topics like these, feel free to subscribe, and I will see you next time.